morning. I was listening the other day and I guess my mic wasn't in good and you can't hear anything I was saying. So this morning, I'm headed to get my nails done and I cannot believe I walked out the front door, my poor wounded thumb, and I whacked him really hard. Why would I do that? Well, obviously I didn't do it on purpose. Now he's bruised again. I put a band-aid over my boo-boo because I can camouflage it with makeup, but it dries it out and it needs to stay moist, not to scar as bad. So I just put a put a band-aid over it. It's healing nicely. So I hope you can, if I'm gonna bother to talk, at least understand what I'm saying. The Steffi litter, praise God, is totally stable and really gaining weight now that they don't have diarrhea. They're really getting strong when you pick them up. They're strong. They're still in two boxes. Uh, the horrible news this morning is that my Cali litter at the house has kennel cough, two of them. I have no idea no idea where they got this. Tanya was here a week ago with some dogs she had had at scent training, but they didn't come anywhere near my puppies, so I can't fathom. I don't know. And they're just now to the age to get their Bordetella, and they had a health well puppy health check today at 4.15, but um, I doubt that that will want them in there coughing. So Blue Boy, that Giggles Boy, has it really bad. Now White Boy has it, but no, nobody's slated to go home until October the 7th. So it'll run through the litter, and it's typically like a something your child catches at kindergarten, and they come right through it, and everybody's fine. But here's my dilemma. I was going to move Steffi's litter, because they're just two weeks old, and they're pretty tender to the house because Cinnamon and Serenity are due. So I don't know if I could, I, you can't have in the same building, you can't keep kennel cough. Like, even though these puppies are on the west side, I would be very concerned if I had um, a mother dog going out into the yard that, Anyway, so here's my dilemma. Either put my newborns out there or put my three-week-olds out at the house. And at three weeks, if they got kennel cough, it's typically not that big a deal. It's just kind of a, you know, it's not, it's not even that respiratory. It's, they get a sore throat. They're too young to immunize. I think I'll immunize their mother. Sorry, people are texting me. Anyway, this morning, just thinking about soul wounds, about how you think, okay, my, you know, in Psalms 23, I think, you know, where David says, I don't know about Psalms 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. All that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. Uh, but you know, in the great psalms that they typically say at people's funeral. And the reason I believe this is such a great psalm is because I believe David had more than one trip to heaven before he died. And so he was seeing these things in heaven, right? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He causes me to lie down in green pastures. He restores my soul. That's a powerful word. So we can take our wounds when people wound us and people disappoint us and people hurt us inadvertently or on purpose. We can take our soul to God and He restores our soul. So I don't know what 
what you're facing today or what wounds you're dealing with today. But I know your answer is, is God and his wonderful love. You know, Kat Kerr teaches us to release all these things from our soul, right? Release our wounds, release our trauma from our soul, release bitterness and resentment and unforgiveness from our soul, and then we bind God's light to our soul, and we bind God's love to our soul, and His kindness to our soul. And so you need a soul checkup every day and before you go to bed. I mean, in the morning, ask for grace, and before you go to bed, release all these wounds from your soul. So my mother is in from Dallas and she's 80 and I have never ever thought of my mother as feeble or not 100% there. And so this visit has been very enlightening. So she's supposed to come to my house today. So pray for me. But let me pray for you. And just remember God is on our side. And he is always good. He is not our problem. And he has healing for us and our body in our mind, in our attitude, and in our soul. Father God, I praise you that the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in me, dwells in every believer, and that power is powerful enough to heal our wounds so that we don't walk around with bitterness or resentment or unforgiveness, but we can walk around loving people in the fruit of love which is joy and peace and goodness and patience and kindness we can walk around bearing those fruits for you and bearing the fruit of prayer father that we would pray for others the world is desperate for love may we be that instrument of love today I pray people would take their wounded souls to you today. They would experience real healing. In the name of Jesus.